Hey everyone, Jamie Lee here from Bird Tricks, and today I'm going to talk about how to train a fearful budgie to like you. Now I get this question a lot. I do have a budgie course, which I will leave a link to in the video description, talking about how I took Blueberry from a pet store and day one learned how to tame and train her. And in just two to three days, she was an awesome, awesome companion. So, and she still is. So maintaining a tame and calm bird around you is a whole other quest, but how to initially get there can be quite confusing for people, especially with people starting out with completely wild, flighted budgies who can just fly away from them at any turn. So I will make sure that I include some modifications for those of you that are trying to tame and train wild, completely flighted budgies versus those of you that may have wild or untamed clipped budgies because it works a little bit differently, but not too much. So I'll try to make sure it's not confusing. All right, so my number one pet peeve when people bring home any new bird, including budgies from a pet store, from a breeder, or what have you, even if it's a rehome, is just that you don't leave the bird all alone secluded in a room to quote unquote settle in. All this does is teach the bird that the cage is the safe place and everywhere around it is scary. So by the time you get to wanting to interact with your bird, it's learned that the chaos outside the cage is only something to fear, not something to look forward to interacting with. So please consider interacting with your bird on day one. Now I'll leave some resources in the video description on what my day ones have looked like with brand new birds. Keep in mind that you're gonna see different species of birds. However, it applies universally to all species of parrots. Now, if you have an insanely traumatized bird where you can't even get close without it possibly hurting itself, then you may wanna start this training inside the cage that it came in. Bee, bee, bee. All right, so first I wanna talk about what not to do because I hear a lot of horror stories on what people are trying to do and sadly, a lot of these techniques do look successful even though that long-term they will not be. So what I refer to as flooding is basically learned helplessness where you teach the bird to give up. And this is a method where you hold the bird even though the bird is terrified of you and you just wait for the bird to settle down. This is a really mean technique. Um, it's basically teaching the bird that no matter how much it struggles or how much it tries, it will not be able to get away from you. And I always forget to silence my phone. <laughs> um, but basically you're teaching the animal to give up, which is not a relationship that you wanna have long-term with that animal. You wanna build trust and have this animal want to hang out with you. And this whole relationship is gonna be based on fear and avoiding it in the future if you use techniques like this. So please don't do it. All right, so if you have a fully flighted budgie, pick a small room in your house. It could be a bathroom, as long as the toilet seat is down and there's no safety hazards in there. Um, it could be a walk-in closet. It could be a small bedroom. Anything that has minimal things for the bird to get into safety-wise, but is an enclosed smaller space that you can work in where the bird just won't fly around endlessly and hurt itself or go somewhere where you may not see where it goes where you'll lose it. So I wanna make sure that it's a small enough space that you can work within if you have a flighted budgie. Another option for flighted budgies is just starting inside the cage with something like target training or luring where you're just associating yourself with treats and associating yourself by giving treats. A great treat for budgies is spray millet on the stick. It looks like this. And the reason that it is so great is because it is on a branch, so to speak. Blueberry already sees mine. And uh, 
And you can give it in a hands-off way where the bird doesn't have to get super close to your hand to get it. Um, and that's kind of nice because it creates a little bit of space that your bird might be more comfortable with versus just coming right up to you. Now keep in mind the main goal of kind of initially taming a wild budgie is associating yourself positively. And how we can do that is through your bird's favorite treat or food. Most of the time budgies come to us on a really crappy uh, branded seed mix that's brittle, um, it's colored, it's just really unhealthy, it's going to cause a lot of issues down the road for your bird and probably cut its lifespan in half if not shorter. So making sure that you do a proper diet transition is really important, but it also is important because it ups the value of the spray millet as a treat. So you can see that Blueberry is really excited about spray millet and that's because she doesn't see it in her normal diet. Her normal diet is a really nice seed mix, organic seed mix that I make at home, which I have included the recipe on my channel. If you wanna check the video description, I will link to it, um, as well as my seasonal feeding system. So she's eating a really, really great healthy diet, which increases the value of her spray millet. So it's completely different than what she gets in her daily diet, which is pretty awesome. So being able to do that and say that in your training is really important because it'll get the bird to want to or be willing to overcome fear in order to earn the reward whereas if you're just trying to use food that's in your birds everyday diet they're not gonna find it worth it to overcome the fear of getting to know you so some ways to associate yourself with food is to be the provider of food all the time. So either giving it through the cage or opening the front of the cage and just having a little bowl there cupped in your hands and just waiting for that bird to come near. Now, first day that I got Blueberry in, she was not food motivated at all. She didn't care. And that's because the pet shop had tons of budgies out together. So they had a 24 hour access buffet to all the seeds that they wanted. So she came to me full anyways and it took a good chunk of the day for her to even look at food um, interest like have an interest in food so keep in mind you may need to be patient and this might not happen right away but the cool thing is is that having the bird out of the cage a lot especially when they are clipped like blueberry was it allowed me to kind of rescue her from places that she accidentally went to or would panic fly flutter to um, and I could help her out of those situations so even though coming on my hand wasn't the greatest experience where I eventually took her which was a play stand um, and various play stands around my house she wanted to be there so she actually got her reinforcement from getting away from the place that she didn't want to be and going to the place that she wanted to be so it was another variable that I was able to use that wasn't exactly food hey Barry you ditched me so once your budgie is associating you with food and is looking forward to seeing you because they know that this means meal time, this means treat time, whatever you've associated it with, you can then move on to formal training. And formal training includes what I like to call target training or touch training because you really want the animal to just touch the end of the stick and the reason that you use this is that it's a hands-off training technique so for birds that are still nervous about interacting with you it's hands-off so they don't feel so much pressure to interact with your hand which is a lot of where a lot of the fear comes from with birds because they've been grabbed or mishandled um, so the next step is target training and what that means is just teaching your budgie to touch the end of the stick and why we do this is because it's a great introduction to trick training and it's also a great introduction to the world of training and getting to know each other through body language. So it's a great way for your bird to get to know you and it's a great way for you to get to know the body language of your bird. So not only can you eventually move on to trick training with this, but you can also get your bird in and out of the cage anytime you want without force, which is really cool. It's basically allowing the animal to make the decision. So I'm gonna see if I can get Blueberry back over here. Hey, Blueberry. Blue, blue. Blue, blue. She just turned around. Oh, it's not gonna be in the frame. Barry. Good, good job. Good job, Barry. So that's all that target training looks like is just teaching them to touch the end of the stick. You can see that she knows this and you can eventually use it to transition to flight training, which is really, really fun. I'm gonna see if I can get her to, uh, oh, I was gonna do this way. Barry. She's like, I'll just fly. <laughs> Barry, Barry. Barry, Barry. Oh, you just flew. There you go, you got it. 
So I was hoping to have her walk up my arm, but she's like, why do that when I can fly? So target training, as you can see, is very universal. You can use it to get your bird to come out of the cage, go back in the cage, go to somebody, eventually use it for flight training. She knows the kiss, so she's leaning in. Um, all those sorts of things. It's a really, really fun technique and one of the basics that I teach as your foundation for your relationship and for training in general. It's also one that other people can use too, even if they don't understand birds or don't have a good relationship with your bird, they can use the target pretty successfully with any bird. Right, baby? Love you. So keep in mind, if you're in a predicament where you have more than one budgie and they're both wild, there's going to be one that is naturally braver than the other. I really recommend that you just focus on that one because as you train the braver one, the other one will learn through observational learning. This means just watching the other birds succeed and learning that way. You don't have to formally train both of them. The other one will just learn it too. I target trained two galahs at the same time who didn't know it. And as one caught on really quickly, the other one sort of got jealous <laughs> about why one galah was getting a treat and he wasn't. And he started learning just through observational learning of observing the other animal of going over and touching the stick equaled a reward and he started trying it. So. Don't be discouraged if you have two wild budgies, just really focus your attention on the one that is most receptive to your training. So step three in training or taming a wild budgie to like you is through trick training, which is what I like to call bond building games. This is where you guys really get to know each other, your bird starts associating with how much fun it can have, and it gets to be learning. Birds like to be mentally stimulated, that's where training really comes through and bridges that gap of language that we lack with them. So some things that I've taught to Blueberry is the kiss. You give me a kiss. We do a little kiss on the lips. She also knows to put her foot on my finger. And these are just little tricks that we trained in my budgie course if you wanna see the how-tos. We do the spin. Can you do the spin on the finger? Good job. Good job, Blue. And then she also goes through my hand. Um, you go upside down. You want to show everybody you're upside down? Good job, your little bat. Your little bat. She jumps through a hoop. Um, she does all sorts of things. She's, she's pretty great. So let me see if I can actually get her to go through my hand. Will you do it in the video? Blue, blue. Nice. She's never done it um, with the surface being my other hand. So that's pretty cool. <laughs> I just figured I would try it. Blue, blue, that was so cute. Can you do it again? Blue, blue, berry. Good job. So there's a lot of fun things that you can teach them. She also goes through um, like a toilet paper roll or a, um, what do you call it? A paper towel roll. So it's actually even longer. It's a lot of fun. And then of course we've done flight training with her because I'm avid for keeping birds fully flighted. So as soon as her feathers were in and even before we were working on hops and jumps and anything she was capable of. So even if you have a clipped budgie, they become really capable really quickly. So one day they'll be fluttering and the next day they'll just be flying and the next day they'll be turning and weaving in and out on all around your house. So it happened pretty quickly for her. And it's been a lot of fun to do a lot of the different flight training stuff. So keep that in mind that flight training really builds a bond and it's a great way to kind of teach the step up. If they're nervous about stepping up onto your hand, you can simply t teach them to just fly to your hand. Hey, Blueberry. Blue, blue. Good. And that's kind of a nice way for them to, again, have choice and be able to choose to come to you. No kisses right now, okay? No kisses. Okay, so some different ways to teach flight training. One is through the step up. So with Blueberry, that's the method I used because she was clipped when she came to me and so she was only able to do a certain amount of flights. It was more like little hops, little jumps, fluttering to the ground, mostly downward. Um, so we worked a lot on step up. We worked a lot on um, getting her to just come over and put one foot on my fingers as one of her tricks so that she was kind of desensitizing her to hands in general so she didn't fear them. And then we also, to desensitize even more so to hands, is when I taught her to go through my hand, things like that, so that it's all by her choice um, and teaching her that hands are not bad. They're not gonna grab her and uh, you know manipulate her in ways that she doesn't want. So 
One of the ways is through the step up and then extending the step up back. Um, another way is through the target training like you saw me do. If your bird is really receptive to target training, you can simply start flight training from object to object. So maybe it's play sand to play sand, perch to perch, just areas of your house that you feel like your budgie's most comfortable. A lot of birds are very comfortable flying back to their cage because uh, they kind of learn that cages are safe areas and spots to be. So that might be something that you initially use. So target training is definitely another way. Um, the other way is just if you start with a flighted bird, they already know flight is a way for them to get where they want to go and you just kind of redirect that. So lots of different ways to, to teach flight. Oh, can you guys still see blueberry? So cute. <laughs> And then don't forget how much fun flight training is. Just because you see me doing all the crazy stuff with the big birds on my channel doesn't mean the, big, the little birds aren't capable too. So work on ascending, descending, going through doorways, even though it's no big deal for these little guys. Um, and just working on really fun things. You can train them to fly through a hoop. You can train them to go around corners. For the most part, these guys are gonna get it. They're agile flyers. Uh, Blueberry found her way, oh, where'd she go? Around our house pretty easily. She helps herself to everything every part of our rooms. Like she usually sleeps in my room, so she flies in there between five and 6 p.m. She likes to chill in Capri's room. If something makes her nervous, she goes to my daughter's room where one of her cages is and she goes and hangs out in there. For the most part, she's in the main area of my house. I have two play stands that she loves being on and around. Um, so she really finds her way around based on reinforcements. Keep in mind if your bird isn't clipped, make sure it has ways to get up high without needing you exactly. So in the very beginning, I talked about how we helped Blueberry get to where she wanted to go. Eventually we made really cool rope areas where she could climb ropes and climb ladders to get to where she needed to, to get her up off the ground because having a bird on the ground is really dangerous, especially one this size. You don't want them to get stepped on or anything else. So always keep their safety as number one priority and really think it through of what could hurt them or how could you make the environment better for them. I hope this video helped you guys and showed a little glance at what it can be to have a budgie as a pet because they are amazing, amazing animals. They are just as smart as the big birds that you see on my channel. So definitely give them a chance to show you. Try all the bond building games that I have suggested. Uh, maybe come up with some of your own. Birds are unique, you can use capturing. I have a free download report on my website about how to use capturing as a training technique and uh, a lot of other resources on my website at birdtricks.com. Plus, I will be coming out with a tiny toy box just for the little guys here soon, which I'm really, really excited about. But for now, you can provide them with any of my toy boxes. Blueberry plays with all sizes as it is. <laughs> so definitely feel free to do that. And don't forget to pick up a copy of my budgie course. You can get it as a bundle with my Family Friendly Parrot Formula One or on its own if you have already watched my Family Friendly Parrot Formula series. Very, very. Can you say bye? Bye everybody, thanks for watching. <laughs> Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and support little blueberry. Little blue blueberry. Let's try and focus on you blue. Ah! <laughs>